Brooklyn Independent Television. A resident of Red Hook for over 20 years, Elizabeth Casper is an accomplished artist whose non-representational paintings explore pattern and shape. We recently swung by her studio to see this incredible artist at work. My name is Beth Casper. I've been a working artist for over 25 years. I would say that over the past 15 years, my work has been primarily pattern and shape driven. As of the past 15 years, it's been non-objective, non-representational. I like to use patterns, um, recombining patterns, repetition and recombination. Up until now, I've always worked on paper, so these paintings are kind of very new. I feel comfortable doing it because I think my work on paper, because it was so shape and form driven, as opposed to line driven, it just felt like a normal progression. But I decided I wanted to explore chance patterns. I had playing cards, so I decided to use those as my means of, of deriving chance patterns. And I also decided that I wanted to get down to basics and use just lines or well bars actually and just the basic colors either primaries or complementary colors so that's kind of where all this color came from everything that you see around you is either pure complements or pure primaries and I've just started to delve into sort of toning down the primaries by using black and white and gray it's almost like become something that I have to do. Now I would have to say, it, I just can't help myself. It's kind of like I need to do it for my own mental well-being. Um, and I guess before that, I didn't think that much about it. I've always really enjoyed making things. And you know, I guess I just think of art as, you know, you're crafting something with your hands and it's very satisfying. Hello, welcome to my studio. Um, I'm going to show you a few pieces that sort of illustrate what I was saying in the interview earlier. The piece behind me is a multi-panel block print called Loop de Lou. When it was finished, it seemed to have something to do with dance. There were three plates, each of which had a fairly minimal image on it. The print is mounted on a panel. It's a few years old though. I'd like to show you a newer piece, which is a painting on panel. I determined the colors, the shapes that I would use, which in this case are bars, and the lengths and widths of the bars. I then actually use a wheel and spin the wheel, and the wheel tells me what length, shape, color will go where. I was completely surprised because I don't really understand the laws of probability and maybe if you are a mathematician you would assume that you would get something that seemed that ended up being visually balanced etc but I was surprised so I kept going with that the other thing that I liked about it was the negative shapes that were starting to happen as a result of the pattern so in a piece like this which is a four part panel the bars are still part of it but the negative space has now become like a dominant feature. So then from there, I have another piece I'd like to show you on the other side of the room, which has to do with these isolated shapes and um, recombining the isolated shapes to create other shapes. So here we go. Okay, so these are the pieces, this, this is the other piece or pieces that I wanted to show you. Those same isolated shapes have ended up here and they've overlapped and created new shapes, the complements of the shape that they uh, abut. This neighborhood when we got here, I guess we were like 
in the first wave of the artists who moved to Red Hook. Um, and pretty early on got involved with the Kentler. And, you know, that's been a real wonderful thing for the neighborhood. Practically from the moment they moved into the building, they opened it and, you know, really tried to bring in the neighborhood and be kind of like a hub for those artists who had moved here. The artists I know who came here back then are still here and they're still making art and um, the neighborhood's changed a lot. I mean, it's become much more expensive in a way that could keep artists out of the neighborhood now. I mean, it's like what they always say, the artists come in first kind of clean up the neighborhood, make it really nice, and then everybody else comes and forces them out. That's sort of happening here, but I think because of the inaccessibility of the neighborhood, it, it, it'll never become like a Williamsburg. I mean, it's just too difficult to get to and get in and out of. Maybe that helps to keep a, good, a better balance. Brooklyn Independent Television on the BCAT TV Network.